sound of your phone screen shattering into a million precious glass shards is what causes many to quake in their boots while others curse the gods above. Which is why glass that is tough and durable is a saviour and an asset to smartphone and gadget owners. An asset delivered effectively for years by Corning. And we were lucky enough to get an inside look into some gasp-worthy demos which exhibited the durability of Corning's Gorilla Glass 6 as well as the company's cover glass innovation, Corning Gorilla Glass DX and DX+. Plus. So let's dive headfirst into the demos. Surfaces and Optics Corning showed us its new glass composites, Corning Gorilla Glass DX and DX Plus, which come with anti-reflective optics and scratch resistance properties. So if you look closely, the DX and DX Plus have an anti-reflective property which gives great clarity in comparison to regular Corning glass. These improvements in optical clarity can also lengthen the battery life of the devices, we are told. While Gorilla Glass DX offers the same scratch resistance as typical Gorilla Glass, like what we see on smartphones, DX Plus on the other hand has scratch resistance that approaches that of alternative luxury cover materials. The Samsung Galaxy Watch for One is shipping out with Corning Gorilla Glass DX Plus, giving it scratch resistance and an anti-reflective property that vastly improves its optical clarity. Design Innovation the company has its own technology called Vibrant Printing, which allows different inks to adhere better to the glass. We even got our hands on the Lego finish and snakeskin finish packs developed by Corning. Drop Test It wouldn't be a Corning story without a heart-stopping drop test to judge the tough Corning Gorilla Glass 6. Though we did just that, dropped a phone from a height of around 1.5 meters a few times. And it survived intact. Full marks in this test. Bendable Glass with foldable phones from Huawei and Samsung now a reality, Corning is developing its own bendable glass and we got a look at it. It comes with a uniform bend radius of 4mm and well could be the material that is used on the third surface of foldable phones and devices in the future. So let's get a little more candid about Corning's plans for our gadgets. John, welcome back to India. We're always very happy to see you here but of course you make these very infrequent trips so we've got to change that around. But this time, I have to say, I just got a demonstration from you of everything. And we've shown the audience all of that great stuff that you took me through. So let's take the first one in out here. A deeper black. Uh, of course, all of us want it. But how does it really help, let's say, a, a consumer or an OEM to take their device to the next level? So what we've done is we've taken the surface of the glass and basically killed the reflection. The only reason you know your phone has cover glass on it is because it reflects. So if you can kill the reflection, then the colors are more vibrant and the blacks are very deep. So that is what we've done with our DX Plus family of coatings. The way brands can use that is, number one, they can offer a more brilliant, vibrant image just because there's less reflection interfering with the image. So the contrast and perceived brightness goes up. Now let's talk about the one, the fourth one, the big one, apparently, uh, the reboot of the entire technology world, right? Um, uh, the holy grail of bendable screens, right? Fold them, curve them, bend them. But all the stuff that we've seen till now has been on a plastic or a composite of plastic, right? Uh, we haven't heard about glass being bent. Then, of course, we saw a demo of it out here. So my first question, of course, is how far are you from this? The second is, are you panicking a little? Because uh, even though a lot of people say that this market will mature after a while, uh, there is that thought that if you can't get into it at the right time, you can kind of miss the bus. Uh, could it be what Intel did with their processors? They never saw the smartphone and everything else that it could do, and today they just can't jump back onto the ship. So you believe that, I, I'll do part A of it till now, how far are you, and part B, are you panicking? Okay. Let's start with the, the second question okay. first. Are we panicking? Yeah, absolutely not. So let's go back in history a little bit. The, uh, the first smartphone, the, the form factor, very clear from day one. Today's smartphones look an awful lot like the earliest smartphones. Correct. So the form factor was clear from day one. The use case, very clear right away. We're going to be texting, calling, taking pictures, using apps. So the use case and the form factor of the smartphone were clear on day one. As a material supplier, we were able to hone in on exactly what problem we were solving. Contrast that with foldable displays. The use case. Not clear. So is there a date in mind where all the problems that you spoke about are all done and we should have the first phone with bendable glass? Because just the term when I say bendable glass in itself just is so incredibly cool in the world of tech. 
It is, and we can bend the glass today. It's just getting all those right properties for the foldable. I don't want to put a date on it, but I'm thinking roughly in the one to two year time frame, we should be right there with a solution.